All right, and we're back. So this afternoon, we're going to be talking about mongoose subdocs in population. Essentially, what we are trying to figure out is how do we strategize the way that we nest data in Mongo using mongoose. We're going to propose that there are two main options that we can use, either mongoose subdocs or population. So in some ways, this gets at the, the issue of whether to use NoSQL or SQL database. In some ways, this population, as you'll see in a moment, is sort of mimicking SQL databases. So we may or may not actually want to use this in practice. It might be time to switch to a SQL database if you're doing things like population. Um, but we'll reference that later on in the lesson. So first, a code example looking at subdocs, and then we'll have population to see exactly how this works. So here, we have a simple document in which we are creating kind of scenario of Project Reddit where we've got comments and posts and we are attempting to make that relationship. Now, we could have just said that comments is going to be an empty array here in our comments schema, I mean, our post schema, and that we'll add in comments as we want. But um, Mongoose actually offers an even simpler solution to that. Um, this will tell us, kind of like whenever we had um, a backbone collection and we told the backbone collection that it's to expect certain types of models. So for example, we had our beer collection and we said that it's going to expect beer models so that when we added a raw object that looked like a beer model, it would automatically convert that beer model to um, a beer. So the same thing is gonna happen here. Whenever we push a comment into our posts comments array, it already it knows that its DNA needs to be that of the comment schema. So here what we did is we created first um, our post model and our comment model real simply. Just call them post and comment based off of the schemas. Um, of course, if you remember, uh, Mongoose is going to intelligently create a collection based off of the model, the plural version of it. So post will be a post collection, comment will be a comments collection. We can offer up a um, alternative if we want to tell it to call it something different, but uh, Mongoose is even smart enough to know that a person model will be a people collection. Um, so anyway, that's an aside. But So here we create a new post model. Notice that we only supply the text and username. It didn't say anything about the comments yet. And then we said post.comments.push, and we pushed in a plain object that looks like our comment schema. Um, and then when we save it, what we'll actually see is that there'll be a comment that is inside of our post comments. So let's go ahead and run this real quick. So we've got, um, I've got again my um, Mongo server running, so don't forget to do that. Node sub docs.js. It will run all this code for me. Now I can go in, show DBS. I called it subdocs example, so we're going to say use subdocs example show collections. I see I got my co my posts and my comments, db.posts.find, and bam, there we go. I've got my one post, and it's got my comments array, and notice that it created this object ID to give it its own ID within there. So I've essentially nested a comment model, so an instance from our comments collection inside of um, inside of our, our post here. So that's our first example. We can use subdocs to nest data in Mongoose. Now, the other option is this thing called population. So in other words, um, we've, we've done the same thing, except for this time around, instead of comments here, putting comment schema, we have added this thing called this object with two properties, type, schema, types, object ID, and ref comment. So if you're familiar yet, which we will be next week, with the concept of foreign keys, what we're going to say is we're essentially not going to put actual comments inside the post schema. Instead, we're going to put the IDs of comments inside the post schema or inside the post. So for example, if we had a post, it had a bunch of comments, um, actually in our database, it wouldn't have those comments, it would actually just have the IDs of those comments. Now the you know strategy here is that 
sometimes we want our data to be normalized in the sense of we want to be able to uh, query just comments or we want to be able to query just post. So if we want to query and get all of our comments, we don't necessarily want to loop through all of our posts and then find all of the comments within those posts, comments, arrays. We want to be able to have our own collection of comments and then just to make the association by ID. So this is a little bit similar to what we did when we went over Redux and we used um, some of those um, like normalizer and some normalization type uh, methods in, in that lesson. So anyways, to get this going, we of course have our comment schema, our comment model, our post schema, again we already talked about the, the reference ID here, our post model, and then here we created a new instance of our post, real simply text, hi there, username, Aaron, then we created a new instance of our comment, and then we saved our comment, right? Um, and then here we said a.post.comments.push a comment and post.save. So in other words, we pushed a comment, right? A full comment called a comment into our post <coughs> comments array. Now, what we might expect is that it would have a full on comment. But if we run this code now, so this is node population.js we look showed databases we called this one population example use population example show collections we've got our post and our comments db.posts.find so we expected if if it worked like it did before with our subdocs that our comments um, property or our comments value would be a full comment. But notice in here, instead what we get is literally just the ID of a comment. So we don't actually see the little comment itself, right? We can, but we're able to query for our comments and we can see the comment there. Now, to actually make this association, what we have to do is invoke populate. So this method that comes with Mongoose to actually populate, um, this post comments option, oops, sorry, Slack, Soup. Um, with the actual comment itself. So to do that, I'm gonna comment out this code. We're actually creating the new resources so that we don't run and create those again. And I'm gonna uncomment this. So essentially you're saying post model dot find one. Since we already only have one, I'm not gonna give it any kind of parameters. And then we're gonna invoke populate the comments on it. Then when we do it in exec, exec's actually going to run that query, and then it should return the actual comment, and we should be able to console log the comment. So again, what we're doing is saying, hey, give me the actual comments that belong to the post that we find from this, and populate it with the actual data. So now, if I run this again, population.js, ta-da, instead of our comment, being just a mere ID, now we've populated that comment with the actual data. So ideally, the um, you know sort of uh, advantage of using population is we have a performance enhancement. So instead of storing all of our nested um, sort of documents within other documents, we can just call populate when we actually want to see what's stored in them. So we replace the IDs with the actual um, resources. Now, um, again, we could say that this is not ideal as Mongoose isn't set up for this. The idea of Mongoose is that you have very, or Mongo rather, is that you have very simple document, database, collection, hierarchy, and you should be able to nest uh, resources within resources. If you're gonna do a lot of complex querying where you want just the comments or just the post or to normalize your data, then it might be make more sense to use um, you know, something like SQL, but I'll let you guys figure that out a little bit yourselves inside this lesson. So um, feel free to partner up as best you can. I mean, you could totally do Hangouts um, or whatever else. Um, at the end of this, here's a little individual exercise that you can play with for fun. Um, again, I think this is uh, just to be straight, depending on where you're at and how far behind you are from the storm, I'd say this is low priority. Um, Population is something that's good to know about and it will set us up for understanding SQL a little bit better, but you know, it's not something you honestly use a ton in the wild. So that is lesson number two. As always, let me know if you have questions.
Good day.